is safe, but the suspect got away with money from the register. WENY's Tangeregi has been following the string of burglaries and robberies in the area and has the story from Uncle Jack's. Bernard and Scott, police are continuing to follow up on any leads after Uncle Jack's was robbed at gunpoint late last night. This is the second time Uncle Jack's on West Water has been hit in about a month. There was an overnight break in here in September. This time, things were different. A suspect ran in while the store was open, held the clerk up at gunpoint, and took all the money in the register. It just makes you feel very uneasy that stuff like this happens and they don't get caught right away. It's just scary. And working in West Elmira, you assume that nothing like that could happen up here. It's not that type of neighborhood. Uncle Jack's Maple Avenue shop on the south side was also hit last month. That suspect was caught after allegedly robbing a convenience store in Rochester. I asked Sheriff Moss if he thinks these robberies are tied. He told me he has no information to lead him to believe that. He urges businesses to make sure their cameras are functioning and if they do get robbed to give the robber the money. It's not worth anybody's life, obviously. Um, if you can get a description, that's great. If you can get a direction of travel when they leave the store or if there's a vehicle involved, if you can get that type of information, that's great. Immediately call 911. And the sheriff is asking anyone who saw anything suspicious last night to contact the Criminal Investigation Division at 607-737-2933. Reporting in West Elmira, Tanja Reiki, WENY News. And a suspect from the Uncle Jack's robbery on Elmira Southside was arrested about after a week-long investigation. Meantime, a Chemung County court jury convicted a Rochester man caught with drugs in Elmira earlier this year. The jury found 35-year-old Derek Singleton guilty on two counts of criminal possession of a controlled substance. Police arrested Singleton after a routine traffic stop in Elmira back in March. Officers found crack and cocaine in the car, packaging materials, and a large amount of cash. Singleton will be sentenced next month. He faces 6 to 15 years in state prison. Well, day two of the Anthony Taglianetti murder trial featured graphic pictures of the gunshot wounds to the victim, Keith Reed. Taglianetti, as we've been reporting, is charged with killing Reed last September over an affair between Reed and his wife. Now, uh, Reed was the superintendent of schools at Clymer and formerly worked in Horseheads and Camp El Savona schools. The Chautauqua County coroner today testified Reed was shot at close range and then he showed jurors pictures of the bullet wounds. The trial is expected to last at least two weeks. <laughs> Well, lots of clouds across the Twin Tiers today. Some chilly temperatures as well and some spotty showers, most in the form of just plain rain. But in some of the higher elevations, reports of uh, some pockets of some sleet mixing in with that rain as well. As you can see the latest radar map showing these spotty showers drifting off towards the south. And these will tend to decrease in coverage area as we progress through the evening hours. And we'll be left with some breaks in the overcast late tonight, allowing temperatures in most locations to slip below the freezing mark. 44 right now. At the Elmira Recording Regional Airport with scattered clouds, uh, relative humidity 65%, pressure on the rise, uh, westerly wind at 12 miles an hour. Everyone pretty much in the low and mid 40s at this hour, though back in Wellsville, and some of the higher elevations there looking at 36 for their temperature, 42 in Lake Mon and also 42 in Aaron. First forecast for the rest of tonight, we are calling for an evening mixed rain or snow shower. Otherwise, skies are becoming partly cloudy, down to 29 degrees with northwesterly winds, 5 to 10 miles an hour. Winds really pick up tomorrow, gusting as high as 30 miles an hour. That'll make it feel very chilly out there, especially with a 5-degree guarantee of only 47. We are looking at some improvements, though, as we progress through the weekend and especially going into early next week. Details in the 7-day in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Joe. Well, you may have heard about this story, a lot of growing concern about thousands of pets across the country getting sick after eating a certain pet snack. Now the FDA is sending out a warning. Hundreds of pets have died, and the Food and Drug Administration is putting out fact sheets for veterinarians and pet owners. WENY's Candace Cole talked to a local vet and joins us now with more. Candace. Scott and Renata, the FDA's investigation is pointing towards jerky pet treats from China, but they haven't identified a particular brand just yet. 
The agency is asking dog and cat owners to report any problems their pets may have after eating jerky treats. So far, the FDA's investigation has linked the illness to 3,600 dogs and 10 cats since 2007. Now, roughly 580 of those pets have died. And despite over 1,200 tests run from the FDA's Center for Veterinary Medicine and visits to pet treat manufacturing plants in China, the exact cause of the pet illness has still not been determined. Although it has been linked to chicken, duck, and sweet potato jerky snacks. Dr. Emily Dugan, a veterinarian at Broadway Animal Hospital, says pet owners should keep an eye out for warning signs. Look for vomiting, diarrhea, if your pet's really tired, sluggish, not wanting to eat, you'd want to call your vet. Right now they don't know what treats specifically are causing it, but if your animal has any of these symptoms, please call your vet or contact the FDA and save the treats in case they would want to test them. Now, tomorrow we'll be talking to a toxicologist with Cornell University. She's attending a conference on this issue as we speak. In the studio, Candace Cole, WENY News. Thank you, Candace. Meanwhile, a Kansas company is recalling nearly 23,000 pounds of potentially contaminated meat. The meat includes chicken, ham, and beef products that could be contaminated with listeria. The USDA reports the meat was shipped to retailers and distributors in 27 states, including New York and Pennsylvania. The products were produced by Reesers Fine Foods in Topeka. Now, there have been no reports of illnesses. Listeria, though, can cause listeriosis, a potential potentially fatal disease. For a full list of affected products and UPC codes, visit our website, WENY.com, and click on this story. And the Twin Tiers' largest employer is taking over a subsidiary of a major tech company. Corning Incorporated announced it will take full ownership of Samsung Corning Precise Materials. This move guarantees a long-term LCD glass supply agreement between Corning and Samsung goes through 2023. Samsung Display will receive nearly $2 billion worth of Corning preferred shares and also invest another $400 million in preferred shares of Corning. The deal is expected to close in the first quarter of next year. Well, one of the two candidates running for Tompkins County judge is dropping out of the race. The Ithaca Journal reports Kelly Dam withdrew from the race after a state commission declared her not qualified for the job. Dam was running on the Independence Party line against Democrat Joseph Cassidy, whom she lost to in the September primary. The state's Judicial Election Qualification Commissions screen judge candidates based on professional ability, integrity, fairness, and other qualities. The commission then rates them as, quote, highly qualified, qualified, or as in Dam's case, not qualified. Dam's name will still be on the November 5th ballot as it's too late to take it off. And in Shimon County, voters will have their say on the county library district's proposed budget on November 5th. Proposition 7 will be on the back of the ballot. It proposes a library district budget of more than $2.5 million. It's an increase of 2.3%. According to the Star Gazette, the library director says costs of retirement, insurance, and data processing have all gone up. Now, if this budget doesn't pass, the district will have to lay off workers and cut services. Well, 175,000 New Yorkers have completed applications for health insurance coverage under the state's new health exchange. That accounts for a large share of initial signups nationally under the Affordable Care Act. Now, like the federal website, New York's online health exchange marketplace was plagued with problems when it first launched. The state then quadrupled website capacity. Now, as of today, more than 37,000 New Yorkers are fully enrolled with individual insurers. According to the Obama administration, about 500,000 applications have been filed through federal and state exchanges since it launched October 1st. The asset test to qualify for food stamps in Pennsylvania may be on the way out. We'll tell you who's leading the charge coming up. Sweater weather for sure over the next couple of days with temperatures not getting out of the 40s and lows down into the 20s. But some improvements in the extended forecast that coming up after the break. Now here's a live look at our Wellsboro Sky Camp. You're watching WENY News at 6.
Well, welcome back. Lots of clouds across the region today, but boy, this is a beautiful shot here. This was taken Sunday. Karen took this at uh, Eldridge Park, Eldridge Lake here, and uh, we're looking at lots of color still on the hillsides. Um, unfortunately, though, with temperatures now expected to drop below freezing over the next several nights, it looks like we're going to get a lot of leaf drop here over the next couple of days. Mixed rain and snow showers possible this evening, most in the form of rain, but in some of the higher elevations, can't rule out a little bit of sleet or wet uh, snow mixing in. No accumulations, though. So good news there. Cold and blustery though for tomorrow. Gusts as high as 30 miles an hour. Finally back into the 50s though, but not until next week. Outside right now, our Crystal City Sky Cam is showing cloudy skies and we've had some passing showers move through the area as well. So you may want to bring along that umbrella if you're stepping out later on tonight. The regional satellite radar map showing lots of scattered showers in the area. Low pressure now cruising off the mid-Atlantic coast up towards uh, New England, drawing some colder air back to the south out of Canada. And if you look closely on this radar map, you can see a little bit of blue trying to show up here in some of the higher elevations over the western southern here indicating some snow showers trying to mix in and some very persistent lake effect now developing just to the north of the Syracuse area. Lake effect snow warnings in effect here as we go through the next uh, 24 to 36 hours. Snowfall rates of 2 to 4 inches an hour possible in the highest elevations up towards the Tug Hill Plateau. They could be looking at over a foot of snow before all is said and done. 30s to the west right now. We're still 44 in Elmira, 42 in Syracuse. But as we get some breaks in the overcast later on tonight, Temperatures will drop below freezing 46 Corning and 40 right now in Penyon. 24 hour planner is showing an evening mixed shower possible scattered clouds overnight upper 20s and then lots of clouds around tomorrow. 47 our 5 degree guarantee and it's going to be blustery as well gusts up to 30 miles an hour. The lake effect to our north and to our west tomorrow and Friday. We're stuck in the middle with just basically mostly cloudy skies. We'll see occasional peaks of sunshine as well. Temperatures staying on the chilly side for this time of year with highs only in the 40s. Five degree guarantee for today. Forecast high 50. We hit 48. So here's what we can expect for the rest of the overnight period for the northern tier. A brief mixed rain or snow shower possible. Temperatures in the upper 20s to near 30. For the southern tier, similar conditions. It will be a cold night. 29 in Coring and Elmira. 28 for you and Spencer. And for the southern Finger Lakes area, look for a brief mixed rain or snow shower with temperatures right around 30 degrees. First warning seven day forecast is showing mainly dry conditions here for the rest of the work week, but cold temperatures, a mixed rain or snow shower Saturday night into early Sunday. Otherwise, next chance for precipitation, not until Wednesday of next week. And by then, temperatures back up into the 50s. Mm -hmm. So at least a little bit of a warming trend, but we're going to have to wait a while for that to happen. It's still a uh, chilly trick or treat, it looks like it might be. That's right. Temperatures next week, towards the end of next week, looking like uh, right around 50 for highs. All right. Thank you, Joe. Well, Pennsylvania welfare officials are reconsidering the state's food stamp asset test. Public Welfare Secretary Beverly McCarrick told the Philadelphia Inquirer she's rethinking the 17-month-old requirement. The asset test was implemented by her predecessor, Gary Alexander. It requires food stamp applicants to prove they don't have any significant personal assets before they can qualify. People younger than 60 cannot have more than $5,500 in assets. Critics say the process is too complicated. Well, in financial news, a court finds a Wall Street firm liable for its part in the housing bubble. And there's good news about gas prices as we close out the year. Deborah Kostrin's got your Bloomberg after the bell report. A federal jury today found Bank of America's countrywide unit liable for defrauding Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac by selling them thousands of defective loans that led up to the meltdown of the housing market in 2008. Prosecutors said home loans were processed in as little as 10 days and safeguards were lifted to boost the number of loans that the lender completed. Prices at the gas pump are expected to drop to the lowest in three years by New Year's Eve. As supplies increase more than demand, AAA says gas prices will average $3.15 a gallon by the end of the year. Well, which airline had the least number of mishandled bags in August? Of course, that's the height of the summer travel season. The Department of Transportation says Virgin, JetBlue, and Delta had the least problems with lost, damaged, delayed, or pilfered bags, while American Eagle and Airtran had the worst record. Stocks falling as market valuations reaching an almost four-year high, and forecasts from companies like Caterpillar disappointed investors. I'm Deborah Kostrin with the Bloomberg After the Bell Report. When we come back, we'll have your consumer alert, but first, here's a look at your local stocks. Welcome back. 
It was an inside job. A group of scam artists stole hundreds of high-end apparel bags. And as consumer reporter Sean Hagerty found out, this scam continued on eBay, but that was the beginning of the end. That's today's Consumer Alert. So we're talking about some high-end bags. They're pretty expensive. So when more and more started to disappear, the company really started to notice how much money they were losing. Of course you feel, you know, violated, you know, you, you, you feel angry. Melissa Maxwell works for a company that distributes high-end purses and travel accessories. Sounds like a good gig, but it's not all glamorous. The company's distribution center was robbed, then was wrapped up in an online scam involving all that merchandise. When they first started, they were just taking a bag or two out of each box. And by doing that, it was not really showing up on radar that things were really missing. Then things got a little more intense. And some of the people who worked in shipping came came into my office and just said, you know, all the boxes are empty and there were, they were strode all over the floor. So that's how we discovered it. The thieves stole more than 200 bags, costing the company about $50,000. From the beginning, authorities suspected this was an inside job. And we knew that they had worked at the sports sack and one of them had a brother that was working there. So we knew they had an inside connection. That's when it was discovered that some of the stolen items are being sold on eBay. One of the key pieces of evidence that we had against them was that they were selling these purses on eBay that had not even been released yet. So we knew that they had to be stolen from the distribution center because they have not even gone on the market yet. Investigators traced the goods back to several people. Nine eventually were arrested. Police say when you're buying online, be careful. When you start trying to buy things off of eBay, you know, the first thing you should do is look at the ratings to see what type of ratings they have, see how long they've been in business. You know, if they just opened something up, be very leery of that. New security measures are now in place at that distribution center, and Maxwell says they'll be extra cautious when they hire new employees. You really just can't trust anyone. Everyone in this case was charged with either buying or possessing bags that they knew had been stolen. Their sentences vary from two years in prison to probation, depending on their past criminal histories. With your Consumer Alert, I'm Sean Hagerty, WENY News. Now that's a sheriff. Got the hat, had the <laughs> star badge, badge man. the that was whole something. work. Is that a real badge, you think? Of course, it has he's to be. a sheriff. It has to be. It's either a toy one or not. Yeah. You know? And this is Andy. Yeah. And he's here with the sports. We got What's real up? sports tonight, Scott. Coming up, the Chemung County Sports Hall of Fame announcing some big dates. We have that for you. Plus, find out how you can see a replica of Ernie Davis's Heisman Trophy very, very soon. Don't want to miss it. Sports is next. The Chemung County Sports Hall of Fame. It's the place where all athletes aspire to be one day. The class of 2013 will have something different this year. It's called Strength in Numbers after last year's December snowstorm pushed off some travel. This year's class will see the most inductees ever. As always, the induction will be during the Josh Palmer Classic. But 2013 will see the ceremony take place on Saturday, December the 28th at Southside High School. A day later, but the same result, giving great athletes their due recognition. We will be inducting 15 members of the class of 2013 plus six members who because of the snowstorm last year were not inducted so we will be inducting 21 new members into the hall of fame on december 28th all right well speaking of the josh palmer coaches versus cancer classic the field is all set to go all the action begins on friday december 27th Horseheads will face Elmira. They're going to kick off the local boys games at 530 that night with the finals concluding Monday night. Now get this figure. Over $900,000 has been donated to local, local cancer patients in the fight against the disease. Speaking of basketball, Cornell is picked to finish sixth in the Ivy League Men's Conference. Harvard, Penn, and Yale are your top three. The Big Red they returned six letter, letter winners this season after a tough 13-18 and 18 record last year. Cornell opens up at Syracuse Friday, November November 8th at the Carrier Dope. Hey, Class AA Boys Soccer Semis, Horseheads at Elmira. The ladies supporting the men, doing some wrecking ball on the side. First half, we're scoreless. Elmira's Kyle Johnson with the give and go, trying to make it count, but no. Horseheads goalie, Rhett Silly with the save. Then on a direct kick, it's Foster Clark. Foster drops it in the box, but it goes wide for the Blue Raiders. Later, another chance for the Express, but big blue, look at that. Coming out with the D. That would not be enough, though. This one went to overtime in the Express. They take it 1-0. They'll play Ithaca November 2nd in the finals. Okay, don't hate. 
The holiday shopping season is just around the corner. At the Arnett Mall, you can get a look at, the, at an early Christmas present. A replica of Elmira native and Heisman winner Ernie Davis's trophy will be on display at the mall December 14th. Now fans can get a chance to take pictures and even look at the famous piece. Also, this is big. The finalists for this year's Ernie Davis High School Football Memorial Trophy will be announced that day as well. All proceeds will go to the Chemung County Sports Hall of Fame. The time, that's to be announced. But Davis, he was the first African-American to win the Heisman before passing away at age 23 with leukemia. So a great event there, having the trophy on display, a replica, but also having those athletes getting recognized at the mall. I love just like kind of strolling through the hall. And yeah, it's a neat little place. Facts. Yeah. All right, well, thank you, Andy. Yeah. Joe's coming back with a last look at your weather and remembering a DEA agent killed in the line of duty while fighting drug abuse. We'll tell you what's going on here locally. You're watching WEMI News at 6. It's time to see what's coming up on WEMI News at 11. And Ben's in the studio with a preview. What you working on tonight, Ben? Hi, Scott. Hi, Renato. Tonight we have continuing coverage of the flood recovery in areas like Sayre after the 2011 flood caused hundreds of thousands of dollars in damages. Another village is hit by burglars will tell you where and the Schuyler County Hall of Fame has three new inductees we'll introduce you to them those stories and more tonight at 11 Scott Hall of Fame theme thank you Ben finally tonight in the spotlight the red ribbon or tie a red ribbon around that old oak tree not a yellow one several kinds of trees actually Trinity of Chemung County wrapped the trees at Southside Community Center the red ribbons honor the late DEA agent Enrique Kiki Camarena, who was killed in action. Now, this is Red Ribbon Week across the country. Trinity and the Proud Coalition are passing out red ribbons at local libraries and other places to take to, they're going to give them to people who take the drug free pledge. Not a bad pledge mm -hmm. to take. Mm -hmm. Great tribute there, too, to mm -hmm. see all those ribbons on the trees. And you get a ribbon. There you go. All right. Lots of reds. Reds on the trees naturally right now. That's right. right about to end though, right? I am afraid so. I think we're going to do a lot of leaf raking here over the next couple of days as we get those sub-freezing temperatures now at night. Uh, here's what we're expecting as you step out this evening. May see a brief mixed rain or snow shower out there, but once the clouds begin to break up just a bit, uh, we'll see temperatures dropping to the upper 20s and lower 30s by daybreak. First warning, seven-day forecast showing some chilly days ahead of us. 47 tomorrow's five degree guarantee, but combine that with gusts up to 30 miles an hour. It's going to feel a lot colder than that. Notice those sub freezing temperatures over the next couple of nights. Maybe some mixed rain and snow showers Saturday night, early Sunday. Otherwise, mainly dry conditions here as we go through the next several days. Yeah, need more than just a windbreaker. Yeah, a heavy winter jacket tomorrow. Yeah. Mittens, hat. Good work. All right, thank you, Jeff. Thank you all for joining us. Come on back at 11. Everybody have a great night. So long.